everybody. I'm Stephanie Spaulding. I teach at an independent day school called Hamden Hall Country Day School in Hamden, Connecticut. And I teach in three divisions. I teach grades five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I even had some juniors last year. So I have a, an interesting uh, task of meeting all of those ages in my Latin classroom. Um, today I'll be presenting an app called uh, Padlet. And um, uh, I'm relieved to say that it's easy to use and easy to learn and easy to teach. So um, in order to present my, this app, Padlet, I actually created a Padlet for you to follow along with. So here is what a Padlet looks like. It's basically an online discussion space. Uh, think of it as an online discussion board. I personally like to think of it as a digital post-it note wall. I'm the kind of person that in my classroom, I love to, to use post-it notes. I have the students writing, drawing on post-its, moving around the room and sticking up post-it notes. So for me, it's a good uh, logical transition to go to a digital post-it note wall. Uh, Padlet describes itself as an online virtual bulletin board. And it's great to share work, um, especially in a distance learning scenario. You can have students submit work and then view each other's work, just like a virtual bulletin board, where students can and teachers can collaborate, reflect, share links and pictures, all in a secure location. And um, the, the, it's very easy to create topics and have your students come on and uh, respond. Um, one of the things I like best is when my students start making these little posts on, my, on a Padlet, I get a little pop-up so I know they're engaging. Um, what are advantages of this app? It's a really simple app. Obviously, look, it's just a space with some, uh, some little boxes on it. Um, advantages, one of the best for us is that there's no login required. So students do not have to have a school issued email. My fifth graders last year, fifth grade down in our school did not have a school issued login uh, email. So they can't create a username and password. With this app, you do not need to log in. Um, it's easy to use to create a Padlet. It's easy to administer. I like to think you can learn how to use it in five minutes and I can teach someone how to use it in five minutes. And to me, that's, that's really um, powerful. For something so simple, <laughs> it also has a lot of cool tools. Um, and I'll show you some of those in a second. How do we engage with students? To create a Padlet and share it to your students, all you have to do is um, set up a Padlet, enter a few pieces of information like the title, the prompt, and then hit this little share button and copy a link. You can also share it other ways, like your Google Classroom or in other learning management systems. You can download and save, which is important because if we're using the free version of Padlet, we're only allowed to keep three Padlets at a time. Each of these um, uh, discussion forums uh, spaces is called a Padlet. And the free version allows you to keep three, but you could always save your ideas in a PDF or spreadsheet. Um, so you can um, simply create a link or you can share it any other way. It's easy to share. If you can get your students a link somehow, they can participate in this um, activity. What about security? Let's jump over here to security. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> I like to say I'd give it a B plus, A minus in terms of security. You can use it anonymously. Um, so if I wanted my students to respond and I want to know who it is, I always tell them. So to create a new note, they just click on that little circle down in the bottom corner and then they can put their name. So if this is something I want to know who says what, I can instruct them to put their name. You could also, if you have older students who have emails, you can have them create a username. Um, so it can be used anonymously, which is an advantage to many of us. Um, you can set things like comment approval required. So um, if a student comes on and leaves a comment, I can, make, I can set it so that other people can't see it until I approve it. And this is important if you're worried about students putting inappropriate um, material in your comments. 
You can also, um, so you can turn on a commenting feature so that you can create discussion threads. And I would say probably the best thing to do is if you're going to use that commenting feature would be to make sure that you actually have the students create a username so that they can't, so it cannot be anonymous. And um, I would also say there's a profanity filter, uh, but it has great limitations. So if you put spaces in between the, the, the letters, um, it won't pick it up. So be careful, but it's pretty good. And I think the best thing to do is to put on teacher approval required so that you can um, make sure that you approve that every comment that's posted is every post that's made is appropriate. So um, what are some ideas for using this discussion forum? I can think of a lot. Um, it's great for in-person classes. It's great for distance learning too. You can use it for asynchronous or synchronous classes. So very versatile. So one, one app is very versatile. And you can also use it to engage students in predicting, summarizing, or synthesizing uh, by using prompts that uh, relate to stories that you've read. And uh, it's a great, also a great forum for students to share work. Um, and you can also have students practice their sk reading skills. I'll show you in a second some of the tools you can use for that. And you can also do, I think, really important here for that social emotional check-ins community building. Um, one of the things that we're worried about if we're starting the year um, as a distance learning scenario, how do I get to know my new students and how do my new students get to know each other? Using posts like this, place like this, where kids can share their opinions, experiences, hopes, dreams, fears, um, is a great way to get this started. In my school, our lower school, um, teachers use this for, um, uh, their morning meetings and you know having the kids do those emotional check-ins what's family life like for you right now and which is something they would do using the whiteboard during a, a um, in-person school time so it's very versatile so you can really do that for community building sharing work discussion um, prompts um, and uh, you know um, comprehension checks um, I'll show you a few examples of how I used it, and then I'll, I'll show you the um, pricing scheme. So here is a, an example of a little comprehension assessment that I gave, which I call beginning, middle, end. This is one of my simplest comprehension checks, and I teach my students about beginning, middle, end right from the beginning of the year because every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So after watching a screencast of me presenting the story of Felix, the students had to go through and explain what happened in the beginning, the middle, end of story. And as you can see, none of these are approved because I wanted the students to not see other people's responses before they did theirs. So if I had hit approve, they can then see each other's. And here's an example of one where I did approve all of the comments going through in a related story where Caecilius and Felix are telling over dinner, the story of Felix rescuing baby Quintus. I asked the students, why did, do you think Caecilius laughed so hard at the end of that story? Because he really laughs in the video. It's so awkward because he laughs so hard. And the students all went on and uh, made a theory about why Caecilius laughed so hard. And you can tell different levels of comprehension. This one student said he thought something was funny. That's why people laugh usually, but um, somebody else put that he laughed because Quintus was so slow to figure out about the baby. It was Quintus, baby Quintus, of course. So these are some sort of comprehension type activities. And then one final one I did as a way of showing, uh, sharing artwork. So the students made some Latin body part figurines, paper on paper, and they used the, um, the snapshot function to take a picture of themselves with the Joe body parts, and then they could see each other's work, which is so cool for them when they're not together. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty cool. And again, it helps with creating the community 
when we are in a distance situation. Um, really quickly, the, the pricing, um, the pricing schema of Padlet. Um, the good news is there's a free one. Uh, the free one allows you to make three Padlets, which is great. Um, they also offer a free 30 day trial, they say here. And for um, memberships, $12 a month and more for a year and school plans are $14.99. And that sounds like a whole lot of money, I know. But um, one of the things that uh, you can do with, uh, that you might try is that I've seen that uh, lower school, elementary school level seems to be using Padlet more than middle and upper school. So if your school doesn't decide to get a site license because it's super expensive, maybe check with the elementary school in your district to see if they could get, give you, um, add you to their site license because um, they may have already bought into it. So thank you for uh, watching this presentation and we'll pause now for questions.